Reddit. I was almost killed at work today. What are some of your near death experiences? Two weeks ago I had some weird chest pains and decided to walk to the air. It got worse as I went but by then I was pretty close to the place. So just kept going. I walked in the automatic door. And within 4 seconds I hit the floor. Heart attack. This was at 2.30 in the morning in this dinky little town. If the heart attack had hit a minute sooner I would have laid out on the sidewalk and died. They tell me that my heart stopped for 3 minutes. I don't think it would have started up again without the compressions and shock paddles and whatever else they did. If you are going to have a heart attack, I highly recommend having it right there in the air. You, sir, are a lucky man. You are a faceless fellow redditor, yet I shed a tear reading your story. My father was not lucky just 4 weeks ago. I miss him so much. We had a loss of depth control on my submarine while in some in heavy seas and in not so friendly territory. Sunk out very deep and had to use emergency blow to regain control of depth. One of the dudes in sonar with me started to cry. Some spooky crap. I, too, usually snort a few lines of emergency blow when things get out of hand. This happened just today actually. I'm visiting my eldest brother for the week and while he is at work today I decide to go on a bike ride to see the neighborhood. I find his bike and take it and start going down the road. The roads are mostly flat and I soon find myself going down a side road with lots of bushes and trees on both sides. Then the road starts to become a downwards incline. Not too steep but steep enough where I am gaining speed without pedaling. I'm now going at a decent pace and remember that it's an unknown road and I don't have a bike helmet on. I should slow down. Hum. That's strange. The brakes don't seem to be working. Moving faster now. Downwards hill getting steeper. Wait. What the heck. I have no brakes. At this point in time I'm really moving quick. I was pretty much going about as fast as someone that was biking all out under their own power on a flat piece of land. I look ahead to see if this hill has any plans to flatten out before something bad happens to me. Hum. This is a problem. The road ahead, about 25 meters away, takes a sharp left turn. I can't see past that turn, but I can see that it's a downward slope the entire way. I had a choice. Take the turn blind and hope after I turn the road is safe and the hill flattens out. Or do something right now to stop my bike before I get to the unknown turn ahead. I decided to do the latter, and aimed for someone's bushes on the side of the road. About 5 seconds later I slam into the bushes moving about, oh I don't know, 20 miles per hour? It was a lot more painful than I thought it would be. I got the wind knocked out of me, and was covered with a dozen cuts or so, some of them bleeding through my clothes. As I limp over to drag my bike over this yard I get a chance to see what was around that blind corner. After the turn there was about 10 feet off street and then a stop sign. It then crossed a 4 lane frontage road that was full of cars moving in either direction at high speeds. If I didn't decide to crash into the bushes I would have taken the turn and found myself moving 20 miles per hour right across 4 lanes of busy traffic. TL. DR. Six hours ago I made a split second decision which ended up saving me from slamming into traffic on a bike. Glad you're safe, keep in mind for later that you can reach your heel around behind the seat and press down on the tire where it passes through the seat stays as an emergency brake. Was urban exploring at an abandoned jail during my high school years. We were on third floor of building and there was a catwalk that was behind between the cells. Decided to explore. Below us was a drop of about 40-50 plus FT to a bunch of mangled metal and concrete in the basement. As I was walking on the catwalk it rotted off the boards and I began to fall downward. My friend was behind me luckily and grabbed me by my hoodie while jumping on the seesawing catwalk. I still owe him to this day because I am sure I would have been impaled on something had the fall not killed me. Needless to say my stupidity would have killed me. Curiosity. This kills a cat. I climb towers in the US. Cell phone towers more specifically. As a climber, we're equipped with various safety devices. For climbing a tower we have a safety climb which attaches to a metal wire running the length of the ladder. For free climbing, outside of the ladder, we have two pelican hooks or PFAS personal fall arrest system, which are basically two huge carabiners hooked onto a fabric lanyard that is attached to our climbing belt. On top of all of this we have a number of adjustable lanyards. 
pelican hooks, and carabiners to make working as safe smooth as possible. One day in particular I was working on a tower in California, roughly 350 featuring, tall, give or take. Anyone who's been mountain climbing in California knows that it can get windy, where are most cell sites located, on mountain tops, better reception, more range, but not fun to work on when bad weather rolls in. This was one of those days where the weather chose to work against us. We arrived, and as soon as the truck door was flung wildly open by the wind, we knew the day was going to be horrible. There's not much you can do, aside from put on all the layers of clothing you have and hope it's enough. I suit up, throw my belt on and stand at the bottom of the ladder, looking up for a moment and listening to the wind howl as it passes through the various tubes and slots of metal situated on the tower. It's a haunting sound. So we climb the tower, and about 3 hours into work I move to work on a new antenna. I do the usual, double check all my connections and slowly put my weight on said connections so that I can let go of the tower and use my hands to work. No problem. I sit there working, shifting my weight occasionally, just doing the job. The wind is pulling the tears from my eyes, and my windbreaker hoodie has been flaying like a hummingbird wing in my ears for the entire day. One little shift of my weight and the world drops out from under me. My foot slips, I grab for the tower, but I'm falling. I've never fallen so slow. I could clearly see a handhold coming up, and remember having the time to consciously think I can grab this before my hip slammed into it and my body slid over the side of the metal. I was caught by my armpit, as traumatic as it was. I don't remember much after catching myself. I sat there stunned for a minute and looked up to where I was working. I would guess that I fell roughly 15-20 feet. I saw the crossbeam that I was tied off to bend slightly, and when I climbed back up to finish the job I noticed that the nut on the bolt holding the piece in was missing. I'm guessing it de-threaded over time, or maybe it was never there to begin with. More than anything I remember just being embarrassed. I never told my co-workers. TL. DR. A faulty bolt connection almost killed me on a cell tower. I almost drowned in a canoe when I was 9. I was under the water for about 30 seconds before my cousin's boyfriend, now husband, pulled me out. I used to work in a computer shop, was a mom and pop computer store that sold custom built machines and repaired PCS. Two occasions come to mind. First, I was holding a motherboard in one hand, and the power switch for the PC in the other. I push the power button with my right thumb and must have been touching some part of it that screamed conductive because the next thing I know every muscle in my arms and torso are clenched like it's minus 80 degrees and the motherboard is smoking. Some sort of fuse must have popped somewhere because as quick as it happened, it was over, and nothing worked anymore. To this day, when I smell burning electronics, my chest twinges. Second, much like the first, only this time involving a faulty power strip. I have my left hand over the center of the strip as I'm unplugging something with my right. Next thing I know, the center of my left hand feels like the solar side of Mercury on a summer day, and my right hand no longer wants to cooperate with commands. Again, bless you fuses, because I'm able to forcibly eject the offending power strip across the room with nothing more than an utterance of obscenities. While writing this, remembered a third time where, as a child, I had a chain much like those used to attach pens to desks inside banks, except each little bearing was three times larger. I was possessed with the notion that lowering one end of it into the open socket of a plugged in lamp might be a good idea. Fortunately I let go of the chain at the last moment and just let it drop. The entire length of the chain lit up in a blue that can only be described as electric blue but still is not given homage by the most detailed video game. In that briefest of moments I smelled the universe. Creation itself was laid bare for my olfactory senses. If you can get high off ozone. I did it that night. The fact that it shorted out half the house and I had to explain to my dad what happened was a minor after effect in my memory. Editing to write, it would seem electricity is my arch nemesis. I've had two cars die to the point of needing replacement due to severe electrical problems. If electricity is my mutant power, I fear I'm doing it terribly wrong. My brother came extremely close to death. 
He was 3 I was 5. We were at our neighbors playing. I was at their pond with my friend and her mom and my brother was riding a tricycle in the driveway. Their grandpa was a truck driver and had the cab of his truck on the driveway. All of a sudden I hear my friend's mom screaming and running towards the truck. She's waving her hands and yelling. Stop over and over again. My brother was riding the trike in front of the truck and the grandpa didn't see him. He started and it knocked my brother off of the trike and underneath the truck. The grandpa saw the mom and stopped. My brother had his head hit from something under the truck and had tire marks on his head and arm where the tires brushed up against him. If the grandpa hadn't stopped exactly when he did my brother would have been ran over. The grandpa stopped driving trucks after this happened because he felt so bad. AWH poor grandpa. My grandparents have a pool, and they usually open it in July. I was over in May and it was scorching hot, and wanted to swim. The cover on the pool was still on, but whatever I thought and still went in. My grandpa was in the house and grandma was shopping so I was alone. I get in the pool under the cover and I go toward the deep end and dunk under. I come up for air, but the cover suctioned back. At this moment I realized I fricked up. I push and push, but no luck. After about 30 seconds, I'm scared shitless thinking I'm going to die here. I want to make one last attempt. I swam to the shallow end, where I could use my legs to push off and I get it off and get some air. No longer than 5 seconds after my grandpa comes out to check on me. We made eye contact and I will never forget the look on his face because he realized what had just happened. Don't ever do that again, okay. After recovering from chicken pox as a kid, I still had one sore left on the top of my head, which I kept scratching and picking at because I was about 7. Eventually it became infected with what we later found out was flesh eating disease. So I wake up one morning, felt extremely weak, told this to my parents, who saw a line of red creeping up my face, and we rushed to the hospital. After the danger had passed, the doctors told my parents they weren't initially sure I was going to make it, and certainly won't either if I'd come in the next day. Mine's sorta lame but, when my sister and I were a lot younger, we were swimming in a friend of our parents hot tub, which was only half uncovered. We liked to go under the part covered by the heavy hot tub covering, since the water was lower and there was space to breathe. Unfortunately, our parents friend thought we got out because he couldn't see us under the covering, so he closed the hot tub. We became terrified, and being two girls in elementary school, we didn't have the strength to lift the cover off, and we were scared we were going to die, because of the lack of air and steam everywhere. Luckily after a while of banging and pounding and yelling, he realized we were in there and rushed to open the cover. Still scared that I almost died of suffocation. When I was a baby my dad was holding me upright while walking along the new property my parents bought. A hunter took a shot at us and my dad swears the bullet went between our heads. I of course, have no memory of this. Not one involving me but one caused my me. When I was around 3 I got lost in a supermarket when shopping with me mum. I just wandered off and my 8 month pregnant mother went into a complete panic. This was around the time of the Jamie Bulger incident. I was found about 30 minutes after she lost me but she had freaked out so much that she went into early labor. After an awful lot of bleeding and a very complicated birth she and my sister were okay but the truth is almost killed my mother. I still feel very guilty about it. Ooh honey, it wasn't your fault. You were only 3 years old. You had about as much conscious intelligent control of your actions as, well, as much as a very little child could possibly have. While camping around Austin, Pedernales Falls I think, I went on an impromptu rock climbing expedition after breakfast. I got all the way to the top of a 30 foot cliff that we started down below at the river bottom, to where we had set up camp. My feet were on a 2 inch ledge with my feet dangling off the back. A fellow camper had mustered up the ability to navigate the last 6 feet and was grabbing a rope. I lost concentration and remember falling down a 10 foot sheer face and hitting the boulder below. I then fell backward and by only a miracle I hit the one tree that had grown between the boulders up to this point. My back hit square in the middle of this tree and I literally kicked myself in the face with both feet. From there my body slid down the second boulder and I spun around to hit the ground moving forward face first. I hit the ground. My body performed a front flip and my right knee hit a rock as I landed on my knees. 
I clutched my knee for a second before I got up and ran back to our campsite as I knew my knee was going to swell up and we were at least 3 miles from the car. Almost drowned. Got saved by a lifeguard who only had one arm. And that's why you leave a note. Mother frick. OP. I've always had a deep respect for lathes. I'm an aviation maintenance engineer, and I fix a lot of aircraft and airframes, so occasionally I'll do some work on the lathe. Often, for the aircraft I work on, we are milling extra strong titanium but mostly aluminium. One time, the lathe, at about 2200 revolutions per minute instantly stopped. The lathe jammed up, and in the process, the shock broke the material off the clamp assembly and threw it to the ceiling at ungodly speeds. It shattered one of the massive lamps used to illuminate the hangar, and caused the glass to come raining down just feet from me. I'll see if I can find a picture of these lamps. They are massive. It's insane. Example, you ever see those big dome lights at Walmart or whatever store you go to? They're shaped like that, made of solid heat resistant glass, filled with several bulbs. All that glass, shattered. Oh, and they're about 8 feet big, too. Thought I broke my back surfing once. I came out down under a wave and slammed against a rock. My spine bent back and I heard everything crack. Somehow I was able to get up fine. But the thought of me getting paralyzed underwater shook me up a bit. This actually happened to a friend of my sister. And he wasn't so lucky. He was playing soccer with some friends at the beach. And slipped into the shallow water. Where he hit his neck on a rock. The water was shallow. So his friend was able to prevent him from drowning. But he is now a quadriplegic. You're really lucky to be alright. I was born. Well. Three and a half months premature. My mother was very worried. I bankrupted our insurance company. Or so I was told by my dad. I am still not mature. But now my mother more annoyed than fearful. Also. When I left the incubator. After three-ish months. To be taken home. My father was throwing me into the air. We have ceiling fans. My head came an inch sort of the spinning blade. So you almost die when you're born so your dad celebrates by almost cutting you in half. Amazing. I am a manufacturing manager in Texas. I have seen a machinist working an automated lathe with his shirt untucked. The lathe malfunctioned and started operating when he was working on it and caught his shirt. He was pulled up and over for about 20 times until someone could shut it off. He cannot walk anymore. That guy is lucky as frick. I've seen pictures of lathe operators who get their shirt scrubbed. It usually ends much worse. During officers training in the German army my class and I received training on our assigned weapon systems. I'm with armored reckon so mine is, or was, since it has been phased out a few years ago, an 8 wheeled reconnaissance tank with a 20mm machine cannon for self defense. This is some serious hardware. Dealing out 20 mm E rounds with a kill radius of 6 meters at 1000 rounds minute. They are pin fired and the primer needs about 70 neutrons. That's 7 kilograms of force to ignite the charge. This will become important later on. So I'm tasked with loading the gun up for some live firing as fast as possible, since we were already behind schedule. Now, the ammo comes in 25 round belts, which have to be linked and fed into the storage compartment inside the turret. This process is done by one person, sitting inside. There are special tools to pull out single rounds, overlap two links and connect the two belts with the spare round. These have to be used, for safety reasons. I, being young and dumb, but ambitious, of course choose to ignore all safety precautions because it's faster that way. The he storage compartment is at about knee level in front of me and holds around 300 rounds. And I am trying to link the final belt to the snake like chain of death 0.5 meters away from my crotch. But the round I have to pull out is stuck in the link. I apply all my strength but this sucker is stuck. For a second, I contemplate using the special pair of pliers designed exactly for this task. No, I pull again, with the belt against my shins, pulling the round towards me for maximum leverer. It suddenly comes free, unable to stop the motion because of the surprise. My hand ammo combo moves between my legs at the speed of sound. No, it didn't hit my Johnson, but the base of the round, where the primer is, struck the edge of the steel storage container under the seat I was occupying. With the loudest freaking clang I have ever heard. I pause. Silence. Five seconds pass. 
10 seconds pass. A bead of sweat rolls down my cheek. I finally manage to move my arm again. I look at the base of the round. Around 2 millimeters. That's one stroke tenth of an inch. Next to the primer is a huge freaking dent. Twice that deep. What I'm trying to say is, a bit more to the left and that thing would have gone off in my hand. Sending shrapnel and burning powder right into the ammo storage where 299 rounds of live 20mm he ammo were sitting. That, combined with the 500 liters of diesel fuel in the tank would have provided quite a spectacular fireworks display. I presume, maybe they would have found my teeth. Terribly sorry mister, and missus. DJS 4000, but your son is dead because he was a freaking idiot. There are more instances where I almost died, almost got shot, squashed, decapitated, during training, but this one had the most profound impact on me. Would have been a shame. Those tanks aren't cheap. Used to work at a bookstore, Borders, to be exact. When I was in my late teens early 20s, there was a guy that I worked with who was in his mid 30s and basically a hardcore nerd, wore cloaks, still lived with his mom, had a gargantuan comic book manga collection, made stop motion animation movies with comic book figurines. Every nerd stereotype ever, including the not so great at human interaction bit. So, one day, we had some sort of disagreement, I won't even pretend to recall about what, as a revenge joke. I had an idea, we had an employee hold shelf behind the registers, visible to customers, where employees could reserve stuff they wanted to buy once they were done with their shift, grab the item, add a little tag with your name on it, and buy it at the end of the day. I decided to reserve a few items for the guy, with his name clearly visible, compelling literature like, everybody poops, why do I have two daddies and the classic? How to massage your horse, to put the immaturity of the last one on the same lines as the first two, I taped quotation marks around massage. Turns out, he was a hardcore, hardcore homophobe, and the book suggesting that he'd come from gay parents was a mortal insult. He worked the first shift in the cafe the next morning, whereas I usually closed. Before I got in, he decided to grab my coffee cup from the rack where the clean ones were kept and put some industrial strength drain cleaner in it. Fortunately, he had made some kind of joke about my well-being to the guy who took over his shift for his lunch break, who checked out my coffee cup and noticed that there was, in fact, drain cleaner at the bottom, and reported it to the manager. If he wasn't such an egotistical freak, I can't help but wonder what an ounce of drain cleaner does to an esophagus. TL. DR. Psycho ex co-worker took a joke way too seriously and half asset tried to poison my coffee with drain cleaner. When I was about 4, I was waiting in line to jump into the ocean off of a dock in Jakarta when a little rude French boy jumped in the water right as I was supposed to. He ended up jumping on a man of war jellyfish and nearly died. If it had been me, I was so little I would have died. I fell almost 200 feet off a mountain in Colorado. It happens to the best of us. I was working at Walmart on the maintenance crew overnight. There was a blocked drain near the deli and I had to dump some clog remover into it. No big deal. I walked up, found that someone had jammed a wet floor sign into the drain grate, so I yanked it out, didn't know if the clog remover would bleach it or something. In pulling out the sign, I also moved the drain cover. I dump in about a gallon of the stuff. That's what they told me to do, and figured I was done. I took off my gloves, tossed them in the trash can next to me. Then I noticed the grate was shifted, with a lack of sense. I was a teen. I put my hand in the water and moved the grate back into place. No biggie. I just saved everyone's loose change from falling in the drain. I walked into the back and was doing something else for a bit. Kinda noticing my hand was sorta itchy. I have eczema. So being itchy is nothing new. I went on to grab an broom with the hand I put in the drain and the broom stung my hand. I looked all over the broom. Nothing sharp. So I took a look at my hand. My hand was turning deep red all over. My nails were deep yellow and floppy. It was covered in red bumps and there was a black patch forming on top of my hand. I thought it was some massive allergic reaction. So I took some Benadryl and went to find the manager. Manager is nowhere to be found. He was an alcoholic that would sleep off hangovers in the meeting room, so I went to a friend of mine that was also on the maintenance team. He screamed. Not the reaction I was hoping for. 
He dang near drugged me into the bathroom and told me to turn on the faucet and keep my hand under it. So I did. He runs out like he's on a mission. Runs back in with the manager. I chat with the manager a bit. Gets sent to the hospital. Apparently, it wasn't an allergic reaction. The doctor told me it was the natural reaction of someone's skin to industrial strength drain cleaner. My skin was developing a massive chemical burn. And if I'd let it go or not notice it as soon as I did it could have burned through my skin. Into my blood. And laid me out. When I was around 7 I almost fell into the septic system in my yard. The access point was opened and I didn't see it until my leg was dangling into a pit of crap. The event scared me so bad that for at least 2 months I didn't go into my yard. I was around 11 months old at the time and was always a playful baby. My mom was cooking something up in the kitchen and let me play in my crib. I was very giggly and would make noises so my mom knew I was okay. However at a certain point she stopped hearing me make noises completely and I previously took a nap so she knew something was wrong. She found me not breathing in the crib and immediately dialed 9. 1. 1 and tried mouth to mouth but nothing was working. She felt like the ambulance was taking too long so she picked me up and ran down the stairs of our apartment complex to look for help. Coincidentally, there was a police officer just about to leave responding from a call and he noticed my mother bailing her eyes out. The police officer rushed us to sick kids hospital, here in Toronto, and luckily we lived 10 minutes from the hospital. The ER was able to revive me within 5 minutes. The ER team later told my mom if it was 10 minutes longer I would have died. Still brings chills when I think about the story. Probably the most frightful thing for any parent to go through. Worked in a 120 year old building where the elevators were built to be operated by people, not computers. They put in push buttons, but there were always people there working on the elevators. They never seemed to work right over all the years I worked there. I can't remember a time when they weren't trying to fix at least one of the elevators. One day I was riding an elevator down and it suddenly stopped. Just sat there for 10 seconds or so. Then it jumped up about 3-4 feet and instantly dropped about a floor. It then slowed back to normal speed, and stopped again. The weird thing was that nobody screamed, nobody talked, nobody made any sounds. We all pretty much assumed we were about to fall to our deaths. But there was a weird electric feeling as we just waited to see when it would happen. Waiting, not moving, total silence, instead of plummeting us to our deaths. The elevator then just resumed its normal course to the next floor and opened. 2. Tower of Terror. I love that ride. Hit a deer while in a rabbit. Deer head smashed the windshield and pushed the glass into within a few inches of my face. Only the layer of plastic designed to keep the windshield together kept it from decapitating me. My face was filled with broken glass, which is really awful because you can't pick it out. And when you try to brush it off, it drives all the little slivers deeper in and they hurt more. I'm convinced I still have glass shards in my face that will remain there forever. In a final act of revenge, the deer spun around and its butt simultaneously busted my back window and left poop on the rear seat. Took me a moment to realize you were talking about a VW. The mental image that I had initially was a bit odd. I got hit in the head with a lawn dart once. Just bounced off. That's what you think happened. You're actually in a coma in the hospital right now. I was 40 years old when I did this. Stupid. I know. But I am still here to tell you not to do it. I live next to train tracks in the city of Houston. One very foggy winter night, I went for a walk on the train tracks. I heard a distant train and saw the glow of the light. I turned around and started running back toward home. The tracks are lined with tall weeds, meaning that there was no real area to jump off into, without getting dirty, scratched, and wet. I was going for the break through the weeds, where I got onto the tracks. The train was closer than I thought, due to the fog. It was getting louder, and the light was brighter. The horn was blaring. I was running, and I tripped, and fell flat between the rails. I jumped up, jumped into the weeds, and the train shot past, horn screaming. With some presence of mind I marked the spot where I was with a chunk of wood. I got up after the train passed, went home, got a flashlight, and came back to my marked spot. After a bit of searching, I found my glasses in the rocks between the rails. I have never told my wife or my boys about my misadventure. 
I was playing some pickup ball at a park in a pretty rough neighborhood where I used to live and my friends and I were playing some major douches. It was pretty close so in turn the games got pretty intense and as I was going up for a layup some guy on the other team pushed me in the back and as a result, my head, basketball hoop pole, not good. So apparently I was knocked out for 10 minutes before I woke up. I went back home and I was still dizzy and continually got all my details all mixed up so my parents insisted on taking me to the hospital. After some foggy moments I am in there answering some questions and they tell me they are going to perform a CAT scan. Not sure if that's how you spell it. They put me on the bed and they tell me that they got a brand new machine. So rather than just imaging my head they decide to do a full body scan to test it out. Beep. Beep. Bop. Goo wop. Machine finishes and the doctors look at the x-rays. We are all astonished that in addition to a concussion that I received by being pushed into a pole, they find out I have stage 1 bone cancer in my left forearm. I think it was called Ewing's bone sarcoma or something and they told me it was a pretty rare case. Had it not been for that bastard pushing me I don't know how far the cancer would have progressed before we diagnosed it. Phew. I was doing one of those assault course things that we all do as a child. Harness and safety gear on as we all do. I must have been around 11 stroke 12. Headed on up the rock wall and had to leap onto some sort of pole thing that had a platform on it from the top of the wall. Anyway, I'm on this platform and next I have to head across the monkey bars to finish the course. So I jump across onto the bars, when suddenly, the harness snapped. I was essentially about 50 feet from the ground and impending death. And so I had to get to the end of the monkey bars. Luckily I did and I made it to the bottom unscathed but shaken up. Let's talk about my 2011. Shall we? 1. I was walking to school. Just got a text with some bad news from a friend. Distracted. I looked up and saw a car slowing to a stop at a crosswalk. I did not check to see if she saw me. She did not. As I stepped out, she slammed into me. Pushing me into oncoming traffic. Due to perfect timing she pushed me between two cars as they passed and I managed to awkwardly dance out of death's way. Much crying on both our parts ensued. 2. I got a moped. It is windy as frick in Hawaii and I am not experienced at all with moped riding. I was coming home from work and a huge gust of wind caught me off guard. I overcorrected and ended up tipping over while going forward. Again almost getting caught under the wheels of an oncoming car. Luckily, they stopped right a few inches short and my moped kept going right into someone's front lawn. Much crying ensued. 3. My fiancé came to visit over Christmas break. It had been very windy for the previous week. On Christmas day we were walking around in the military park down by Waikiki. We stopped for a few minutes to look at this plant and exchange to each other how it looked like the top of an enormous onion. We continued walking and suddenly there is this horrible creaking. I will never forget that sound. This inexorable, monstrous death rattle. We both look up at the huge tree above us for falling branches. Nope. The entire freaking tree is tipping over directly onto us. I felt my fiancé bolt from my side and immediately followed him. He has better situational awareness. When I felt him run I was like crap better run too. We could feel the leaves brushing us as we fled. Had we not stopped to look at the plant, we would have been too far under the tree to make it out. A huge branch fell just where we had been standing. Much furious fricking ensued. I've had a few. 1. Disc grinder exploded in my face. Embedded many chunks in the concrete walls floors and the steel workbench. Unwounded. 2. Lit myself on fire. Burned quickly through several layers of greasy work clothes. Lost some hair on that one. Nothing else. 3. Ran a quad bike into a tree doing something around 70 miles per hour. Tossed back first against a tree's trunk. By rights I should have wrapped around it backwards. Got scratches, bruises, and clean x-rays. 4. Sitting in the back seat of a car that got hit during a turn. The car that hit us went just over 2 feet into our car a couple inches behind me and took the seat out from behind me. Those are just the ones that stick out in my mind. From the sounds of it you're lucky you aren't a mangled pile of body right now. When I was 15, my mom was driving me to school, and since it was rather early in the morning, she fell asleep at the wheel for a second. 
the road in question had no curb. And to make matters worse it was right beside a salt marsh. Needless to say, water almost up to the bottom of the windows, which we got out of. To make matters even worse, I don't like being wet. It was not a good day. Upvote for the wet comment. Once, my girlfriend asked if I thought a friend of hers was pretty. I said yes. Our family was moving into new houses during my baby times. It was still in construction and they decided letting loose a quiet, 3 year old baby around huge pits of death would be a good idea. So there I am looking around and I see this giant hole that could have been a basement I guess. I start walking towards it when my brother of 8 years old comes in and swoops me off my feet like freaking superman. I owe him my life, even if he beat me up a lot. This isn't a joke, but sounds like one. When I was younger, I enjoyed eating the powdered cheese out of boxes of mac and cheese. I thought that crap was delicious. I would pop open a box, take that white pack of cheese out, hide the macaroni box in the trash can, didn't want mom to know what I was up to, tear open the pack, lick a finger and start eating. One day a friend was over and I decided I was gonna eat some powdered cheese. However, this time was different, licking a finger just wasn't getting me all the cheesy goodness that I wanted. I decided to turn the package up and pour the cheese in my mouth. I guess the anti-clumping material wasn't mixed at the right ratio, because the entire package poured into my mouth. For a split second I enjoyed the burst of cheese, the I realized I couldn't breathe. I was choking. I started trying to cough up the cheese. But poofs of orange cheese popped out of my mouth as I ran around in a panic. I tried to use the universal sign of choking but my best friend was too busy rolling around on the floor laughing. My instinct said drink water. Well that was a mistake. I went to the sink, stuck my head under the faucet, and saw my hopes fade away. The water turned the cheese into a thickening ooze of death. By this point orange ooze was running down my face and covering my shirt. I knew at that point I was going to die. In an absolute terror, I decided that I would try to run outside and use the water pressure of a hose to blast the cheese out of my mouth. I made it out the door and apparently blacked out. The pressure of hitting the ground knocked the coagulated cheese out of mouth and I lived to tell this story. Boy I was an idiot. I was 15 or 16 and went to pool with my friend. I didn't know how to swim and I told him over and over again. He said don't worry he's actually trained so he got me. Idiot me jumped in 6 feet. I was flapping around while he just stood there. I went all the way down. Pushed myself up. Slowly moved to the corner and got out. Turned out he didn't know how to swim. I was driving a forklift. And in the processing plant I worked at you drove the lifts around like a racetrack. And you had all the things that needed to be picked up in the center. But there were also 30-40 electrical cords hanging down so that the center had power. Well these cords were black and the forklifts were black. I picked up a giant tote and began to reverse and bam. I pulled the head part from the cord. Huge shock. Flash. But luckily it was on 110 volt and not one of the 220 volt. I was fired for the incident. Bought for the firing saying they didn't have proper safety hazards on the cords, and I got unemployment. I was lying in bed chewing on my laptop cable. Suddenly I saw a flash of blue light and my jaw clamped down and I started shaking in extreme pain. This continued for a few seconds before I managed to spit it out. I don't chew cables anymore. Posted this some time ago. I literally stumbled into a young black bear. I was wearing my Nike free shoes so I seemingly didn't make enough noise and wind probably was coming from the other direction. I was walking ahead of the group, looking on my phone not paying attention, until I saw a movement in my peripheral vision. Looks odd, not native speaker. By the fact that I saw him move while looking on my mobile phone you can tell I was close. I look up and there is a black bear standing and he appears to be frozen mid eating berries. The rest of the group approaches more loudly. He attempts to climb the tree and obviously fails because he was too big and the tree too small. Now I slowly back up and in a calm but alerted voice I inform the group about the bear. They stop. I commence slowly backing off. All the while facing him but not looking in his face directly. When 4 meters away, two young Canadians coerce me and the rest of my group to move deep into the woods. All the while talking calmly to the bear. While this seemed unreasonable to me as it would limit my movements I did as I was told and climbed into the woods. Backwards. Feeling awkward. 
Now with room on the path we were sure the bear would leave. The bear wasn't so sure. He curiously made a step towards me. The Canadians calmly talked to him and he halts his movements. Now it gets worse. From the other side of the trail there are people approaching. Placing the bear in an awkward spot. And even more people approach from our previous location. We alert them. They stop. Thank god. After what seemed like an hour. It was probably 1-2 minutes. The bear finally casually left the scene. Looking bewildered. When I was 19 my best friend and I were driving over a mountain pass in Colorado at 630 in the morning. I was asleep in the passenger's seat when I was awakened by my friend screaming. We had hit a patch of ice and she lost control of the vehicle. Next thing I know we are rolling off the side of the mountain. We made probably 4 full rotations before my car landed right side up on a flat part of the mountain. When we landed I realized I had been thrown into the driver's seat and my best friend was no longer in the vehicle. Upon exiting the car I found my friend laying 30 feet from the car. She had been ejected from the vehicle through a busted out window. Upon realizing she needed medical attention I ran back to the car to get my phone. I dialed 9. 1. 1 but there was no cell service. I thought maybe if I got back on the road I could get some service. So I crawled up the mountainside. It wasn't that steep. It was more of a big hill. Through the snow. Once I got back to the road I tried the phone again but it still had no service. I had no other choice but to walk to find help. The nearest town was 25 miles away and at 630 in the morning there weren't too many cars passing by. As I walked I noticed my whole body beginning to stiffen and I couldn't turn my head without feeling a blinding pain in my neck. I walked for 5 miles before someone finally picked me up. They drove me into cell service and I finally was able to call for help. 20 minutes later an ambulance came and strapped me to a backboard while another ambulance went to find my friend at our crash site. The closest hospital was 45 minutes away and the whole way there I begged the EMTs for any news about my friend but they wouldn't tell me. I got to the hospital and they rushed me in to take x-rays and MRIs of my neck. Finally when we were done a nurse came in and told me that I had a broken neck. When she told me all I thought was how lucky I am to have survived that let alone can still move my body. However, my joy over the fortune of surviving such an incident was immediately squashed upon learning my friend had passed away at the crash site. She had been crushed by the weight of the car rolling over her and wouldn't have made it even if I could have found help right away. That was 6 years ago and there isn't a day that goes by that I don't think of her and remember how lucky I am to have made it out of that accident alive. This reminds me of my cousin Jay. A few years ago, in his tool and die shop, a similar situation happened. There was a viewing window to the shop. As he was walking by one day, the man working the lathe lost control of the bar. The bar flew out and through the window and into my cousin's head. His son was the first on the scene, and it was pretty horrible. Jay was in a coma for the next 3 months. After, it has taken him a long time to regain movement. His short term memory is gone. He is now able to do many things, slower than before, but at least he doesn't need constant assistance anymore. I'm glad to hear you narrowly missed a similar fate. When I was 10 we lived beside train tracks, and for some reason I was allowed to walk on them because the train only came once a day. Great parenting. My friend and I looked behind us one day to see the train coming around the bend. There was nowhere to jump off the tracks because of high rock ledges on each side. I took off running, leaving my friend behind, and made it to a spot just ahead with a drop off into a rocky ravine. Jumped in, and my friend came after. We weren't hurt, but I'll never forget seeing the front of that train directly behind me. I didn't tell my parents until I was about 35. Not my story, but a friend who works at the docks in Long Beach. Working the cranes to load and unload cargo ships. Barely missed being crushed by a falling load. His co-worker was not so lucky. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.